everybody. Happy Monday and welcome to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is our weekly show where we bring you the latest news in all things television and talk about the week that was in TV. Joining me this afternoon is Josh McCuga. Thank you, Sinead. What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Back here, we got a really big episode, obviously. We're in Game of Thrones time, guys, so at any point in this episode, we could just bust into a Game of Thrones conversation. We won't apologize, but we will ride in on dragons next time. Also here is Sasha Pearl Raver. Oh man, speaking of dragons, my theories, my theories are bursting. I, I, it's a good thing we're behind the desk because I do have a raging throner right now. Oh, a it's so major. <laughs> a raging throner? That's no, a new girl. one. I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> also here it's David Griffin. Do you have a raging throner? Uh, <laughs> Always. I don't want to speak on that. I've never seen a black man blush this hard. It's impossible for me to blush. Even under these lights, I cannot blush. Um, Uh, All I have to say to the Collider uh, community is what is dead may never die. And we have not died yet. We are still here going strong. Which Nate DeFries leading the way. What is um, dead will never die. What is, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And, and what is throning shall always throne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that stuff needs to stay under the table. Under the table. Guys, before we get started, uh, always hashtag at Collider TV Talk. If you are sending in your questions, we'll get to your Twitter questions at the end of this show. Until then, Sinead, what's first? Well, I'm going to keep your throners going. <laughs> Netflix is a gift that keeps on giving, and this time the powers that be answered our collective plea, and John Bernthal's Punisher will get its own spin-off series. Stephen Lightfoot of Hannibal fame will step on as showrunner, and though we have no timeline for release, Frank Castle is building his arsenal in preparation. Josh, what about the Punisher spin-off series excites you the most? This was, I mean, obviously a no-brainer. You know, uh, he was the, just the penultimate in in this season of Daredevil. I honestly thought, and we talked a lot about it in the Daredevil reviews, which you guys can see on the channel uh, here on Collider Videos, that I think they could have made this whole season just Punisher Daredevil and like the quest of trying to find him, either defeat him or, um, you know, use use that Punisher storyline. Now that we have a whole Punisher spinoff series, we have the chance of maybe getting a Daredevil like Captain America Civil War kind of thing going. John Barenthal is a vision and this guy is Punisher is finally this is the finally the Punisher series we want to see we've gotten some movies that aren't that great we're finally going to get the Punisher David I'm excited because not only are we getting John Bernthal in his own Punisher series we're also getting we have a lot of Hannibal fans out there and we see Hannibal that was canceled prematurely too early but we were getting one of the Hannibal writers, which is great news because Han- that series was dark. I was surprised when I watched the pilot for that on NBC. I was like, can they show this on NBC? I don't even know if it was TVMA when it first came out. It might have been TV 14 or something, but I was like, can they even show this? And they did. They pushed the envelope. Punisher pushed the envelope on the season of Dare- Daredevil, went places I didn't think we'd ever see. Mm-hmm. And Bernthal, he's, he's, he just plays psychotic, crazy, unpredictable so well, whether he's in a, a film like Sicario or Wolf of Wall Street, or he's in The Walking Dead, he always steals the scenes that he's in, so I can't wait. He deserves his own television series. This is going to yeah. be great. I'm so happy. I, I, I could just, like, everything you just said, yes, 1,000%. Mm-hmm. When he left The Walking Dead, I was so sad to see him go, because he is a phenomenal actor, mm-hmm. but like you said, there was an, a Handle episode, I want to say it was the third in the series, where I remember, like, <clears throat> pausing my television and saying, this is on any NBC. There is no way they are showing this. To know that now it will be Netflix. There are no rules. There are no parameters. They can take this as dark, as crazy as they want to go. I think it's going to be fantastic. And Barenthal deserved his own show. I think it would have been great to have seen this as Daredevil, you know, colon the Punisher finds his quest or whatever. That would have been rad. I, I, don't, know. <laughs> I don't know about the Punisher finds his quest. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, I mean, I'm not coming up with titles here, he's but... Got, like, he's LARPing <laughs> into, into Hell's Kitchen. It's like... It's like a... boys, <laughs> no, I need like, the Punisher now. <laughs> Everybody needs a quest. Yes. Everybody needs a quest. But I think it's going to be fantastic, and I'm sure they're going to speed this thing up. Like, I would not be surprised at all if by February of next year we have episodes. Yeah. And, you know, right after he was, spoiler alert, if you're not catching, I mean, it's season two, for Christ's sake, uh, when he's killed in, in, in The Walking Dead. Oh, nice. A little oh, yeah. 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 Way to go, Adam. Spoiler. Tear for Adam Smith, Good everybody. Good job. Um, <laughs> season two, spoiler season alert. Season two, spoiler <laughs> Six years later. That should literally just rest over my mouth yeah. at all times. <laughs> that <laughs> and a big X. And no, it's a not safe for work. Not yeah. safe for NSFW. Correct. But go um, ahead. Spoiler right alert. After, sorry, right after The Walking Dead, uh, when he was killed, he went and did that show Mob City 
for TNT, which not that many people watched, and I thought it was really well done. He was fantastic, and it maybe maybe the series wasn't perfect. It was a little too Dick Tracy e at times, but, but not fun. I love Dick Tracy. Yeah, yeah. lack the fun of Dick um, Tracy. But he was great in that. I think like you hit on like you hit on one thing. John Bernthal does so well diversity versatility he every one of his roles seems so different well but wall street he's a tan muscle head that lives in his mom's garage <laughs> you know it's shane in the walking dead he's i shane was my favorite man he led the whole crew and sinead's nodding over there you were a shane fan i, I know loved you were. shane on the walking See? dead that was that was a great time for the walking dead it really was yeah oh, those were the days those were the days i will say when he was gone was when i stopped watching and then i came back later yeah yeah so there you go all right what's next sinead John Krasinski, best known as action superstar Jim from The Office, has signed on <laughs> to star as Jack Ryan in the newly announced Amazon series from Michael Bay's Platinum Dunes and former Lost co-showrunner Carlton Cuse. There isn't one particular novel of source material for the series, and Cuse and writer Graham Rowland said it will not be an origin story, but will jump off during the prime of his CIA analyst career. David, is John Krasinski the right actor to take the Jack Ryan mantle? Before we get to, to Mr. Krasinski, John, Carlton Cruz is making too many TV shows right now. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to slow, he needs to like to slow He's his got, roll a little bit. What are you about? a strain. And, and Colony and then, on USA. Now this. I mean, Carl, I know he's a legend, mm -hmm. but... Uh, he needs to take a nap or something. He needs to take a nap or something. He needs to get a little rest. Okay, so <laughs> Jack Ryan has been played by some very iconic actors. I have a little list here. I'd like to just read through a couple of those people. We have Alec Baldwin in The Hunt for Red October. You have Harrison Ford, Ben Affleck, and Chris Pine have all played this character. Now John Krasinski joins that... Uh, just, I don't know, that's uh, that's a Hall of Fame deck that right is. there. That's huge. That's big. Those are some superstars. Now, Jack Ryan hasn't had the best run lately. That Chris Pine movie was uh, struggling. But maybe this is the perfect series for television. And I like Krasinski. I mean, he's, he's I think of him more as a comedy actor, but he can go both ways. You know, you, you know uh, the Benghazi movie oh, that Michael Bay did? Yeah. Uh, he can go. He looks tough. I mean, he's, he, he's a good-looking man. I can't hate. Sasha, I know you were... I mean, Come you, 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 you want to take that TV screen home with you later on tonight, I what think. What do you mean I want to? I am going to. I'm going <laughs> to rip this thing off the wall and run down the block. I mean, 13 I Hours this, yeah. was fantastic. And he was... It was so ignored because it's a Michael Bay movie and because it's a subject that's really touchy. But he proved full-on he can be an action hero. Mm -hmm. Jim, The Office, won every heart of every woman and many men mm -hmm. that I know. He also is a producer. He has a really interesting eye. He sold a lot of shows that have not all gone to air, but he definitely has a critical producerial eye. So I trust his look at material. I think this is going to be rad. And yes, Carlton Cuse may be spreading himself thin. He's in the J.J. Abrams school. Like J.J. Abrams also, so many projects, but just because you have a ton of stuff on your plate doesn't mean you can't do it and all he's really not, well. He's like Shonda. I mean, he's not going to be writing every episode. Totally. He's not going to be in the writer's room every single day. He's probably going to be more of an overseer yeah. and getting that paycheck too on top but of it. But I think yeah. this is going to be like Gordon awesome. Ramsay. He just walks into his restaurant and he's like, this is good. This is so <laughs> terrible. And then he <laughs> but I will say, I, when you first started reading off those names, I was thinking he's kind of the perfect amalgam mm -hmm. for me of Harrison Ford, familiar, likable, affable, but also some of that Ben Affleck, Studley, kind of bad. Like, I buy it, man. I but buy it. But can be 100%. funny though, too, right? I mean, oh, Alec Baldwin sure. funny. Yeah. Uh, Harrison Ford can be very funny. So I, I, I agree, Sasha. I think he's perfect. And you, you're basically like creating the perfect human for Jack Ryan. And that sort of makes sense. I mean, Jack Ryan, Patriot Games, I could watch that anytime, anywhere. Clear and Present mm -hmm. Danger, extremely underrated movie. I love that movie. I like anything about drugs and cartels, if, if anybody doesn't know about that. Like, you can make a 45,000 episode series. I would binge everything it was about, like, drug cartels. I love that stuff. For me, okay, John Krasinski, I really feel like he got more street cred when he married Emily Blunt. I was like, he's cool, yeah. good dude, Jim from The Office, crushing it. Then he marries Emily Blunt, every dude's like, Pfft. is he that cool? Like, all right, Jack Ryan, I'm in. Because Jack Ryan, Shatter Recruit, just an average movie yeah. at best. Uh, some of all fears. I feel like if it's on TV, maybe I'll catch a part of it. Um, but I think this is a perfect uh, sh a series for TV because you can do so many different storylines with the CIA and it doesn't have to be Quantico where it's like, Gah. Quantico, here's the plot line. Everybody's good looking. That's why we can cast models on TV now. Come on, Quantico. Jesus. It's I mean, about spies. It's not about being good looking. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of places this uh, show can go, too, because if you look at it, I don't know a lot about Tom Clancy books. I mean, I played the video games. I've watched the movies. Now we're getting a TV series. This guy, Jack Ryan, does a lot. 
He works for the CIA. He's been head of the CIA. He's been vice president. He's been president, I think, a couple times. So, yeah. I mean, this guy, there's a lot of ways the story can go. And it said it's not going to be an origin story. It's going to start uh, with him in his prime, I guess. This is, of course, Krasinski yeah. is in his prime. Yeah. Uh, so, I, yeah, I think it's going to be good. Yeah, they're going to do very specifically around the CIA right. and him like being an analyst and him being an operative, which I think will be awesome. My only question to you guys is where mm. do you think the show will land? What network? Amazon. Yeah? Yeah. That's where it is. Oh, well, excuse me. <laughs> hey, guys. Can't wait to watch it on Amazon. Thanks for listening to Sinead. <laughs> Speaking of Sinead, so... what is next, Sinead? She said John Krasinski, and I went and fully blank. Out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I blacked right. out. I stroked out for a second. I'm here. That's all right. I wasn't listening to myself either. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, fresh off of his Oscar-nominated role in Creed, has signed on to star in Antoine Fuqua's Omerta. The series is based off of the third book in Mario Puzo's trilogy that started with The Godfather and The Last Dawn. This will be Sly's first foray into TV, if you don't count the reality show The Contender with Sugar Ray Leonard, and also Fuqua's first attempt at a traditional organized crime piece. Sasha, do Stallone and Fuqua strike you as the dynamic duo for this project? Before we talk about that, can we talk about that hideous picture of Sylvester Stallone? Poor Stallone. He's a handsome man. This is <laughs> yeah. not a kind photo. What is that? <laughs> what Let's hear it for Ray Hoy, everybody. Oh, <laughs> uh, but I will say, I was a huge fan of The Contender. That show was able to pull heartstrings in a way. It actually got me much more. I was always into boxing, but I became mo way more of a fan after watching that show. I think that Stallone, I mean, let's not forget, the dude is the guy who wrote Rocky. Like, he's not just an actor. He's not just a pretty face. <laughs> he can do a lot more. Jeez. And Anton Fuqua, what I love so much about Anton Fuqua's work is that he is able to take an actor who we already love, who we're already very familiar with, and create incredibly iconic performances like when you think of Denzel Washington can you not think of training day as yeah. almost like one of the first things off the top of your head he just does things that are so dynamic the equalizer was a great movie like he the equalizer is so simple yeah it's so good because you know? of him he's because just him. a smart director mm -hmm. yeah. I think this pairing is going to be gangbusters I cannot wait to watch the show and of course Makuka you like you said like give me the mob give yeah. me cartels like, I, I love mob stories I'm Italian so uh, anything that kind of shows Josh, up you've read this book oh I've read Omerta yeah. uh, I've read all of those Mario Puzo books they are it, it, I don't want to be that dude that's always like the book and so much better on the movie <laughs> but the books are really really good I'm um, so proud of you for reading thanks dude. guys yeah, good I'm, job I didn't actually put down the book this time picked them up. I actually picked up the book and I read it. I think my mom forced me to, but you know, she, she picked her battles. Uh, so I, Omerta, um, the, the Mario Puzo trilogy, a lot of like later on in his life, he started hiring some ghostwriters, but he always like Carlton Cuse kind of a situation mm -hmm. or Shonda Rhimes. He always had his hand in the books. I think personally that, um, Stallone is having this beautiful kind of renaissance post Creed and he's getting away from, not that I didn't like the Expendable movies because he doesn't like 97 explosions per minute in a movie, <laughs> but um, I think that they're finally going to get like get to slide back to acting. His, he has good acting chops. He has, and especially like Fuqua, like what Ryan Cooler got out of him in Creed, Fuqua's the kind of director can, that, that can do it, absolutely. Yeah, I, I was going off Sasha. I think Fuqua, does, he just leaves these images in your mind. I mean, he's a very visceral director, very intense, dark, gritty, which is going to set up perfectly for... It's going to be interesting to see what his take on a Puzo book is outside of a Francis Ford Coppola interpretation yeah. of it, you know, to see this. And like I said, the cast, it's going to be interesting to see who they cast. I guess it's his right-hand man, the guy he's teaching. You know more about the book than yeah. I do. I was just reading the description on it. Well, the thing with Omerta, the, they did The Last Dawn a long time ago mm -hmm. on, on CBS or NBC. It was like a t one of those TV series. Yeah. Yeah. six hours it wasn't very good it just wasn't well done this was before the golden age of tv which we're in now that there's so many more outlets and things you can do with it and they've always talked about bringing the last dawn back but i think some people own the rights to that and it was it was so poorly done but omerta is the final thing and this is like the aging gangster which is you know stallone's gonna play i have role. a soft spot for anything that has a mob and i mean vinyl has some of the mob elements in that you have shows like boardwalk empire sopranos just some very excellent well-crafted shows i'm sure sasha would agree with me on that note Unbelievable. Uh, no, um, did you uh, see uh, how he got that vinyl reference Sinead, in there and i have tried not to talk about it Sinead? Sinead? john krasinski john krasinski <laughs> all right you guys remember that scene in wet hot american summer when they talk about meeting up 10 years later to see what everyone is up to and to make sure you you make it your beeswax to be there on time yeah well that's actually happening the success of the eight episodes of wet american summer first day of camp led to netflix's order of another eight episodes only 10 years after the final day of camp from the movie this may all sound kind of confusing but if you're a wet hot american summer fan it makes total sense 
Josh, dare I ask, how excited are you for another eight episodes from Camp Firewood? Well, first of all, uh, that was my bad. Uh, I left out a word there in the description. <laughs> I do the rundowns, guys, and sometimes... Uh, hot. The word was hot. hot. The, yes, hot. My bad on that one. Uh, I This is, first of all, this is my favorite thing in the world. I love Wet Hot American Summer. When somebody asks me what my favorite comedy is, uh, it always goes Dumb and Dumber, MacGruber, Wet Hot American Summer, okay? Now, everybody is going to crush me for Josh. those, and I don't really care. What? Right? MacGruber is amazing. Thank Wet you. Hot is amazing. Dumb and Dumber has not made necessarily held up as well as it should, and it's been tainted by two, but... Dude, Correct. But I'm the with you. Wet Hot American Summer is the perfect summer movie. It's a camp movie. What are you giggling about, Sinead? <laughs> what? Wet Wet American? Are you wet so American what are you are you giggling summer. about Wet American? <laughs> yeah. What are you giggling hey, about? Hey, hey Ashley Mobo. What, what happened? About? What happened? Wet American? Stop being wet American. Just wet being American with it. Time. It just changes the whole concept of the movie, so I like it. <laughs> it's not wet just hot. <laughs> It's, it's wet. wet. <laughs> <laughs> it just cuts to ch <laughs> Never mind. Um, wet out American. God. So the the first day of camp series that came out uh, earlier this year, 2015, sorry, was unbelievable. I watched this movie almost every day uh, in the summer when I lived with my buddies at the beach. We just throw it on in the morning. We were all waking up after drinking all night. And it is, it's so cult classic. It's First of all, they got Bradley Cooper straight out of acting school. It's his first role in a movie. And he's awesome. They put him in a gratuitously gay scene, which is hysterical. Mm -hmm. um, but they actually, in this movie, it's a little sketch, like a little vignette in the movie when they talk about meeting up 10 years later. And we always talked about, like, they should just do the sequel. They've already talked about the sequel. They could do the sequel. And now they're doing it in a TV series. How genius is this? And Wayne... I mean, oh my god! Yeah, yeah. The truth is, is uh, if I could like beg somebody for a job right now, David Wayne, are you watching? Because I would write on this show so hard. Oh, yeah. The the series is brilliant. The movie is brilliant. And when you do talk about like they got so many people before they were huge. Like this is Amy Poehler. Yeah. This is Bradley Cooper. Mm -hmm. This is. I mean, Paul Rudd, like every single person in this show yeah. is hysterical. I cannot wait to see what they do with it. I want this now. Yeah. I do. My only thing is, why are you only making eight episodes? They like, please. Because they can't. I what, know. are you going to get Bradley Cooper? I just Amy need Poehler? more. They're only 30 minutes. It's not enough time. I they, need more. They shot for, for uh, first day at camp, they shot Bradley Cooper scenes in a day and a half. It's just not oh. fair. And also, keep in mind, anybody who loves Archer... You get some H. John Benjamin uh, up in yeah. here too, and it's brilliant. And by the way, I know David hasn't seen the movie or the show, but H. John Benjamin plays a vegetable can. So that's you're, awesome. You're, you're <laughs> I love him in anything. Isn't he? Was he had that nice little uh, cameo, or I guess he had a, more than a few scenes, but in uh, Master of None, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. kind of being like giving advice to Aziz Ansari's character. He's, he's <laughs> yeah. a great actor, yeah. and he never changes his voice. Never. Why would Archer he? That's Bob's the greatest Burgers, he sounds voice exactly ever. the same. Yeah, he's awesome. No, but this show, I can't <clears throat> wait. I want them to do more. I hope that it's ten years, and then I hope it's fifteen years, and then I hope it's twenty years. Like I just want this to keep rolling. Sinead, have you seen Wet Hot American Summer? I haven't. Have you seen Wet, Wet American, American Summer? Summer. <laughs> John Krasinski right. stars in a Wet, Wet American, American Summer. Summer. It's I watched Jack it. Ryan. Is. I yeah. totally watched that show. <laughs> oh man! Ooh, all right, Sinead, what's next? Uh, all right. <laughs> the Russo brothers, who will see their film Captain America: Civil War, hit theaters this weekend, are headed back to TV with their company Getaway Productions and Skybound Entertainment, preemptively acquiring the rights to the Master. Mind. The real life crime series with comparisons to Serial and Making a Murderer, written by Atavist founder Evan Ratliff, investigates the real life of Paul Leroux, a cartel kingpin turned government asset. David, will the Russo brothers' golden touch continue with the mastermind? I hope so. I mean, you know, we're going to get, because of the success of all of these just crime stories in general, whether it's a documentary or a kind of a drama like People vs. OJ, we're going to get a lot of these. We already talked about the John Benet Ramsey story coming to CBS. This is going to happen. We're going to get a lot of it. it, it some might be hit, hits, some might be misses. You know, they're not all going to be good, even though I know this is a hot topic right now, but I trust the Rooster Brothers, who. I think, I don't know if who got to meet them, but they were here uh, in the yeah, studios. They, they were really nice they're, guys. Their interviews are up on Collider Video yeah. right now. Yeah, really Schmose nice. Did it too. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to bet on the Russo brothers, and I'm going to say, yes, this is a good idea. Yes, I think their golden touch, uh, as Sinead put it, is going to uh, keep going. It's going to stay hot. Like, I, I think these guys are talented. I'm excited to see what they're going to do with the story. You know what's interesting is when I, so this is actually, <clears> I went to the website to look at the source material, <throat> and it looks fascinating, but the thing that's reminded me of the most, having not read or watched that much of, of it, was 
Narcos. Yeah. It seems like a more present Narcos, which is such a fantastic show. And the Russo brothers, oh my God, can they tell a story mm. like nobody's business? I I am thrilled beyond belief that we can get multiple hours of their entertainment. I, and I can't wait for this. I think it's going to be great. And I love the idea that it could be sort of like serial by way of Narcos. I think it's going to be dope. Uh, you know, the, Atavis, this guy is a bu- brilliant writer, uh, Evan Ratliff. And like you said, when you look at the source material, and I was obsessed with Serial. I didn't really like season two of Serial. Yeah. You guys go and listen to the mm-hmm. to the podcast. It's pretty, really well done storytelling. Um, but I love making a murder. And we, we've talked about this before. These These true crime shows... We only know, like, court TV shows us a little bit of stuff, and then you've got, like, all these other, but all those reenactments on A&E and everything give us, like, 1% of the story. Most of them are just CSIs <laughs> dramatized. Did they right? solve it? They solve it. Oh, Guys, they solved it. This Yay. week on the season finale of NCIS, <laughs> they solved it. Oh, my God. It's so Next crazy. week on the show, we're not doing any news. We're doing CSI. Uh, no, we're doing C- SVU. Seasons one through eighteen, we're gonna do a whole series recap of it. Honestly, I'm okay with that because Chris Maloney. Woo-woo. Oh my goodness! <laughs> no, so, <laughs> so, but what I what I got out of it and, what, and reading it and everything is that Paula Rue is what Whitey Bulger kind of was, and I didn't think Black Mass was that great of a movie. I think honestly that that Whitey Bulger's life would be better told in a series, which is kind of what they did in Ray Donovan. Yeah. Yeah, you know, with uh, um, uh, uh, Woods, uh, James Woods, James Woods character, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which they kind of hit on. And last week, somebody said, "Oh, they've never done an, a mob thing in L.A." And he's like, "What about Ray Donovan? Ray Donovan's not really a mob story. There are elements of the mob to it. This is this guy ha- had his hands in just about everything. And what the CIA has done, especially in, like they show it in Sicario, is the CIA pays former criminals." to infiltrate so that we can get in there because we can't win this war. You can't win the drug war. Drugs mm-hmm. are too fun. Everybody knows it. We can't win the war. So Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Drugs are too fun. <laughs> <laughs> we can't win that war, but they keep making these movies and they and we keep trying to infiltrate it to somehow make the war go more in our favor, right? The the, the battle lines, there's no battle lines. It, it, th- this is what the this story is. Uh, and for them to for the Russo brothers who finally like all these misses in the superhero world now are going back to back on on hits. I'm psyched. Josh, your sausage drug knowledge just astounds me. You know, I mean, you're, you're critical of vinyl and how they snort cocaine because that's not how you would normally do it. I was like, you guys just have this knowledge. If that, that's the w- biggest problem I mean, with vinyl, I would have liked the show more. But now, what's next? Sure, Nate. Oh, here we go. We're going to the superhero rundown, guys. This is the point in the program where we talk all about the superhero TV, the stuff that uh, you guys seem to enjoy and we seem to enjoy. And Sinead, what's our first story? We're only 21 short days away from the premiere of Preacher on AMC. This week, we were treated to a brand new trailer complete with the homemade bazooka and just about every other creepy thing you can ever imagine from the graphic novel. Sasha, did the new trailer spoil anything for you? What spoiled it for me is that picture because that's not Preacher, but that's okay. I don't care. It's cool. Don't worry about it. Uh, I think that the show looks rad. I can't wait for it. I think it's going to be awesome. The only thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is I don't know how far they're going to be able to push it. Mm -hmm. I think Mm -hmm. that there's going to be a little bit maybe like, you know, there's standards and practices in television. So there's things you just can't do. Um, But that's okay. I would love to see this go as far as we can without them like getting an FCC violation. And I feel like they're going to try to do it. I think it still looks great. And I'm excited to watch. I mean, David, you're the person who like knows everything about this. What did you think of the trailer? I think it looked great. And I love that it was only about 30 seconds. It's short. You know, they're not. I think some trailers, they show too much. You know, with Game of Thrones. And they released their final trailer for this season. They showed us a little bit, but after the first couple episodes, we realized pretty much everything we saw in the trailer was probably from the first couple episodes. You know, we haven't been spoiled too much. I think shows sometimes reveal their hand. We obviously see it in films, but I love when these little 30 second teasers, you just see all these fast moving images of cool things. You see, uh, um, you know, our face and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, I just want to see more of this world. I want to be exposed to it, but I don't feel like I know what's going to happen. I don't feel like I'm going to turn on the episode and be, even though I've read the graphic novel, I don't, I'm not going to be spoiled, yeah. which I think this trailer did a good job of. I actually have a question for you mm-hmm. because after, thank you again so much for loaning me the graphic novel, reading it, uh, the character of Cassidy, it seems like he's always wearing sunglasses, but he's not wearing them in the trailer. That's interesting. Yeah, that's true. And I was just wondering, like, is that something, does that make sense? I, I don't know. No, I'm not sure. I'm not, I, okay. I don't know. I think a lot of times, and they, they mention it 
anytime you have a mm. character in a novel or a comic book that always wears sunglasses, it's really hard for them to do that because a lot of actors get between the eyeballs. Oh. And it's not just like Lenny Kravitz walking into a club at 1130. You need to like actually see a person's eyeballs to. Also probably helps with the connecting from with, with the uh, audience yeah. watching too. I would and think. plus a lot of times you get a camera reflection. In oh, there you go. The there sun, you go. The oh, look at that. That's Breaking so it down. Much, That's an inside so much knowledge. insight, yeah, know, dude. Inside. So much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ron Wow. Yeah. So um, I will say that what I got from the trailer, which really excites me, is it almost looks like a fantasy true detective. Right? Mm -hmm. Because it's in the South. It's really creepy. There's a guy sitting like outside of a trailer playing with fire in his hand. It's like, oh, obviously he can make fire. This guy looks awesome, right? And then there's a woman with a homemade bazooka that just kind of looks like a yoga mat holder. <laughs> and then there, everything about True Detective that made it creepy in the first season, a lot of that character was the Bayou, right? And now we're in the Bayou and Preacher. We're in the South. All these people are in the country. I've always said my biggest fear in the world is living in a trailer park because <laughs> weird things happen there. Nothing against people that live in trailer parks, but every time it's portrayed on TV or movies, besides Trailer Park Boys, which is a Canadian show, <laughs> when I'm in, when, yeah, which is an amazing show. If you guys aren't watching Trailer Park Boys and the movies, oh my god, it's <laughs> incredible. Everything that happens in Trailer Park, no, like nothing is good in there except for like Last Starfighter, which is a movie from the mid '80s. I love that Sinead's like. Well, I'm just thinking of um, Gone Girl yeah. and how mm. she got the crap beat out of her at the trailer park. Yeah, and mm. how that terrified me of trailer parks. Yes. And you know you're out in the middle of nowhere, and he's like, "Oh, my my neighbor has an arse for a face. Oh, uh, yeah, he just that's a just a stay from down the street, burned it in a fireworks accident. He's a good dude, but uh, his face know. melted in on itself. In and, yeah. on itself. <laughs> this this show is my next. It's my next big thing. I'm so excited. We're about almost it. there. It's yeah. a few more weeks. Ah, man, Dominic, Ooh, come on. It's gonna be. Awesome. This is Sunday so nights, good. right? Is there something else to add to Sunday nights? Be well, a really we got busy Game of Thrones. Week. Yeah, it's gonna be and Penny Dreadful. Be good. It's gonna be a lot. It's yes. big week. So big we'll week. Get into some so. Penny Dreadful guys. Oh we'll no. Get in there. Oh yeah. Here we gotta. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that face, Sinead? I was just thinking of the butt on his face. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's. I don't know how. I don't know about the show, you guys. Like I. I believe it's gonna be really good, but. I, I don't know if it's going to be too much mm. for me personally. Oh. Mm. Do you mean gore like, wise? Do you mean like just gross like dark wise? Wise, like TV shows that are constant dark from beginning to end, I can't get into. So it stresses me out because well, I feel like I'm not going to be able to get into this show because everything I've seen about it is so dark. But it's Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg who are comedy guys. Yeah, and I think I that's part of the thing. And the graphic novel was so funny and like twisted and weird and interesting. He's got an ass on his face. So that's not a dark. That's hole. hilarious. Sinead, that's judging a book by its cover. Okay. And here on TV Talk we don't read books. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, we are going to go into uh, a little bit of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We will maybe a, a, perhaps a spoiler alert in here. Thank you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna celebrate all. We're like so it. excited <laughs> about the spoiler alert graphic. It's like the coolest well, thing. Well, it it's fantastic. Yeah. It's it super is. cool. Um, so this week on Agents of Shield, I, like I said last week, and a lot of the fans who comment in the YouTube section, thank you very much for always, you know, interacting with us. Uh, said that I was sort of right that it's we're turning into like X Men TV. This episode really proved it. Um, they basically we have Ward who came back from the planet Hydra, and uh, you know the gray blue planet was just a filter on a camera, which was extremely frustrating for me. Is now basically Magneto, and he is turning all of the good. Inhumans into bad inhumans and they like it. It's legit like they are doing drugs, David. They're doing some really great drugs. And That's what up your alley, man. Yeah, I know. That's your show. And they're all on some awesome drugs and they don't <laughs> want to stop. And and Shield has no idea what to do. They're totally outmatched. And we're finally getting like what Arrow has botched, which we might get into our lowlights. They're they're creating stakes that people care about. You care about the characters, you care about the love interest. It's not sappy. And now we're into this this it's a legit civil war. We're getting what we're getting on the big screen on the small screen and it's not cheesy so can all. you feel them building up to the civil war yeah like you does it seem like it's actually going to be a part of the world no we're no, 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 not no. going to see it in the film i'm just no. thinking our, it's yeah. a different kind of civil war because okay. we have the inhumans you know uh and but they're basically the mutants of this marvel tv universe mm -hmm. and it's 
it legit is a at some point it's a it's almost like a civil rights thing because these people are inhuman do we give them the same rights as we would give actual human beings that's always the best part about even though it's different with marvel and x-men correct you know i mean you basically had when stan lee has like you know magneto and charles xavier you yeah. have martin luther king and malcolm x yeah. you know kind of different viewpoints going that, that's always a, one of the fascinating even though i know this isn't the x-men it's different but they're, but, they're hitting that perfectly yeah. on agents of shield so mm -hmm. keep it up guys if you want to talk more agents of the shield just we'll talk about it in the comments David. Do I get the spoiler alert gets to stay up on my... There it yeah. is! Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's still there. All right, so this is going more spoilers, but this is going to talk about The Flash this week. Back to normal. Poor... Oh, no! Wait, we're still on spoilers. This is spoiler section. That's all right. Yeah, it's back. <laughs> spoiler, it's, back. it's back. All right, good. I could keep spoiling. Um, so Barry's lost his powers. Yeah. Right, Zoom took him away, which is weird, though, because we see him on Arrow also this past week, and he, he was running quick. So I don't yeah. know how, how that's working. I'm not he sure what the time... He was running yeah. quick. He had his speed. He had the speed for us. I'm not sure how that timeline's working. But uh, this was an okay episode, yeah. I thought. Josh, I know you, you've seen it as well. It was okay. Yeah, so, I, I wasn't... Uh, I, here's the thing. It's still not anywhere near as poorly done as the Arrow has been right. in like the last six or seven episodes. Flash is at least staying with, within certain boundaries but i was not a fan. i think my my beef with the episode was the the character of uh griffin who yeah. uh you know could be like my cousin but yes. anyway uh he was just a, the villain it's kind of a villain of the week throwaway characters just didn't i don't know just didn't mess with me but i do like danielle pennebaker to give her credit was fantastic as a kill, a both actress. killer frost and caitlin snow yeah. and they were going at a little black. bit yeah do, i mean she she was so good they finally gave her something to do i feel yeah. like cw does a good job with its female characters for the most part but i think panda baker's been one of those female characters who's been underused yeah. and i feel like they utilized her to the best of her ability to see she can go dark and she's cool and she's sexy she's a beautiful woman so i was happy to see her so i'm happy to see where the story's gonna go we're almost there i think there's yeah. four episodes left we're winding down we're winding down almost there maybe maybe question for you and maybe the whole panel i think we've talked about this before but are you guys exhausted by 22 episodes yeah, I mean, I, I thought about, yeah, I was just saying, so yeah. I started, I, before we were watching The Flash, I was like, man, this is episode 19. 19. Damn. 19 episodes, 19 hours. Now, granted, it, I think Flash is good, it's entertaining, but you feel it, especially when something like Game of Thrones goes by in 10 weeks, you know, the two Flash, and a half months. I feel like The Flash also takes, like, so many breaks, numerous yeah. breaks throughout yeah. the season. Like, what's that about? Because that just makes it feel even longer, because... It's like a few episodes, and all of a sudden, it's like on a two, three week hiatus, right? Is that so how like, it can works? Can you describe like we're on this old system in the United States here? We got sweeps in like February or March. They take these long breaks, take the holiday breaks, so they can showcase new shows. AMC doesn't. Well, Walking Dead does this, but for the most part, FX, HBO, Showtime, they don't do this. How come these the network shows are doing this? I mean, you have more insight maybe than I do. Because in that. they have to. They have to write it. Because there's. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about actually like the timeline that goes into making a show. So let's say you get picked up, which a lot is happening with a lot of shows right now. So a show gets picked up, and then within two or three weeks, you have to staff that show, and there's only a very small talent pool that they have to pull from, and then you're immediately writing episodes, drafting episodes, shooting episodes while you're writing more episodes, and the pace is so insane that they just don't have. They can't make up the time, mm -hmm. so they have to to take these breaks that's why like Shonda Land always takes like these six week breaks or like a four week break so they can catch up with the demand because let's say a show takes eight days to shoot and it takes however long to like write and everything else you just you can't do a full season but that's what's so smart about an Amazon a Netflix a Hulu they bank it they let you binge it or uh, something like HBO they do everything in advance they like there's sometimes shows that are still like shooting toward the end. Like they'll be on episode eight when they start airing episode one, but that's rare. But networks do that. Well, they'll start episode four when they're like airing episode one. They just can't keep up. It's mm -hmm. just, it's too much of a, of a train rolling. I think where we are too is when you're in the, in the binge mode is like, oh, hey, yo, you don't watch Flash? You can totally catch up. It's only 10 episodes. No, it's 44 episodes and it's only two seasons, mm -hmm. right? That's a really hard thing for people to grasp around, which is a why a lot of times, and, and we may make fun of them or whatever, but we don't catch up on a lot of network show because once you're a season into it, you're 22 episodes behind. We already have enough TV to watch that's good, let alone throw us 22 episodes of a procedural. It's really hard to kind of catch up with it. So you can't possibly... It's it's a it's an aging model that I think the networks could get away from. Like what they would did with, with Agent Carter, right? Six episodes right. in the middle of the season. You could do f thirteen episodes of The Flash, right? Take a break and then have like a spinoff of The Flash, like maybe of the Cisco Chronicles, and he does right. six episodes just him, and he's got his own kind of universe or something. 
Or you That's do anthology series, which correct. is what FX has been so smart about with American Crime Story, American Horror mm -hmm. Story. Yep. So you sometimes have like familiar elements, but you're getting an entire new narrative and you can do all kinds of really cool stuff that way. Yeah. yeah, but if you take a character that is beloved and you like create these kernels, sort of like a breadcrumb trail, sort of like what... No, <laughs> breadcrumb <laughs> what Netflix did like you go into Daredevil then you get Punisher and then it's you know it's wet American summer and it's a party <laughs> I, I just don't think we're going to see a change there's just too much money with commercials and ads well here's I mean. the thing though but yeah, look, look at, look change at eventually. soap operas like soap yeah. operas are all about money and that was all about creating the same narrative over right. and over so a housewife could be taking care of a kid and vacuuming a floor and then come back and oh Victor's still alive Victor's mm. in a coma but he's yeah. alive still and maybe he fell down in an elevator shaft but he's coming back right. and I feel like like that's what a lot of network TV has started doing where it's like all these characters have these cyclical plot lines so there's familiarity and they can put in all that marketing stuff yeah. but there's no like press forward but that's why soap operas are dying off yeah. mm -hmm. and if the main main character gets killed off on a show right like when Dr. Uh, McDreamy got killed off on spoiler alert you want to throw that up there oh throw it up let's see what a great season like <laughs> there yep. it is when so, Patrick Dempsey laughed. When Patrick Dempsey didn't want to like stay on Grey's Anatomy, they killed him off. But we knew that he wasn't going to be on the show much longer because like four or five episodes before that, they're like, oh, his contract's up. He's probably not going to renew it. They're like, oh, well, how is he going to kill him? Instead of are they going to kill him, right? Yeah. So you, you like on Quantico, I'll bring up Quantico again. They're not going to kill off Hottie. Right? They're not you mean the lead with all the makeup oh, on? The, the beautiful girl. Yeah, that's she's her pretty. name. Her name is Hottie. She, yeah, she's, she's pretty, yeah. Gorgeous McGorderson. Okay, that girl is FBI. Because that's how FBI agents, you know, they, yeah. they put full makeup on yeah. before they go in and f fight crime. Listen, yeah, I've been happens. arrested yeah. a few times. Once by a female cop. She looked nothing like Quantico. Uh, Sinead's going to go work the beat as soon as this <laughs> is over. Yeah. Like, I'll show you how you guys are talking about. Stop it, freeze! Sinead! But to freeze! Look at that! Fun, fun, fun. But <laughs> it's it's hard to really get into uh, network TV, and and they're like, oh, it's the network model, it's the network model. Break the model. None of us are sitting back here like, I'm stuck. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep pushing for 22 episodes. The whole world wants to see better network TV. That's what we want to see, right? We, everybody's like, oh, the network's crushing ratings. Yeah, because they're the only things that you can rate. Yeah. You can't rate Netflix. You can't rate Amazon. Mm -hmm. Quality, not quantity. Quality, not Quantico. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Uh, guys, we're going to go into the highlights and lowlights of the week. This is some of our favorite things that happened. Let's start with highlights. Uh, we haven't talked Game of Thrones yet, so we should probably talk about that. Uh, let's talk about the Twin Peaks castings. Uh, Ten Cloverfield Lane director is going to do a Black Mirror episode. I know you're, you like Black Mirror. Do you like Black Mirror? I've never watched oh, it. I like and Black Mirror, and Black I Mirror. love Ten Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Uh, Penny Dreadful return. You guys can talk about that. I'll take a potty break. And then Hulu is going to bundle cable and broadcast channels, guys. What do you want to talk about first? Oh, my Game God. We have to talk about Game of Thrones okay. first. Game of Thrones last night. No spoilers. We no won't spoilers. do spoilers. There won't be any spoilers. Do we have a no spoiler alert? No spoiler Damn. alert. Anti-spoiler <laughs> no, alert. Been, baby. <laughs> All I'm going to say is this. It might have been... It is, without question, probably the greatest show that will ever be on television, or mm -hmm. has been up to now. Yeah. Last night, I would be willing to say is top three episodes mm -hmm. of the entire series. They hit everything that I needed, all of the emotion, all of the storytelling. They gave me new characters, they gave me old characters, they made crazy stuff happen. And the entire time, I was just like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> it was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Dude. I like that. <laughs> right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. And David and I do the same dance. Oh, my God. All the time. Mostly during Banshee. But yes. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, come on. What did you think? It was incredible. Um, I will say that sometimes on Game of Thrones, I wish they had, like, freeze frame character name, where he's from, <laughs> who he's related to. Because... No spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Uh, we see Balon Greyjoy meet up with his brother because he calls him brother a couple yep. times. We don't know the brother's name. In I looked on Wikipedia because, I, again, I don't read the Ooh, books. Oh, we've got to be careful with that. I know that he has three brothers, so I'm not sure if which brother that is. Uh, but in I Game of Thrones. I spoke with Ken Napsok because he's so read I. all of the books. And yeah. he said, This is the one eyed brother, and the other two brothers probably aren't going to make it into the yeah, season. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we got, we got that brother. Uh, I loved. I loved the the ending of it because I think what it did was it gave us what Walking Dead didn't. Mm -hmm. Dude, do you preach. agree? I agree. Uh, Game of Thrones is unique in that 
it really controls the conversation on Sunday night more than any other show out there. Even though I think Walking Dead afternoon. sometimes <laughs> the numbers might look a little bit better. But remember, it's, it's premium. So HBO's numbers are huge. I mean, if you yeah. almost want to like double them because it's on a, a, a premium network, unlike yes. AMC, which anybody can get. I think that uh, it, it really helps that. Uh, what got it? <laughs> which is sorry. happening? It was, sorry, it was supposed to, to be sorry, sorry, What happened? Oh. Something, <laughs> sorry. Um, no. Uh, you, you want to talk about the ratings? Go ahead. No. What? Well, I know, but what? What happened? Sorry, there's something we need. That's to, for Josh. Yeah, I got it. I oh. Got it. Okay, sorry. Scott. Sorry about that, Adam and Dennis. Sorry. I just got, I thought there was something like wrong with the set or sorry about that. We might cut that part out. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, so go ahead. You're, so start, you're talking ratings. Yeah. So, uh, well, we never know what the, you know, basically from premium to network, the ratings, you know, you can't really tell because HBO has subscription base. Yeah. So it's impressive what they do every single week. And they deliver this, like I said, they, they control the conversation. People want to talk about it. The acting, the sets. Not just people die. I think that's the thing. Walking Dead, people die. It's like, you know, we're all waiting to see who's going to die. Who do you think is going to die at the end of the season? And those conversations exist in the Game of Thrones universe, but it's not, I don't think, why people watch the show. They watch it because they care about um, most of the characters, whether you're a Tyrion fan or whoever. You, you, you're going to love those characters. You want to see what they're going to do week after week. It's what fascinating. What was crazy this week, too, is <clears throat> I feel like they torment, they gave so much misery to so many characters. And at the same time, you like won over so many things. Like there's this incredible moment that Dinklage has where I was just like, I, I literally could not love you anymore. You I, were... I love you so much. And I will say, I feel like my prediction is going to come true. Yeah, it's, it's well, well, <laughs> dude. Um, we were watching it last night. You guys can see our review on Collider Videos. Uh, Dennis and I did it last night with Wendy Lee. And uh, we were talking that as soon as Dinklage comes on screen and, he, and he's doing what he's doing, non-spoiler alert, we all said, he needs to be in this show more mm. often. Like, there's not enough Dinklage. We, if I could see Dinklage for, like, way more... Because he only had one scene in this whole episode. But it was, pro but it it was, was one of the great scenes. I'm saying, it was such I'm not, a good scene. I'm not disagreeing. It, it's, it was freaking fantastic. I would just like to see more of them. Well, and I will say, I was so happy for... There was a character... Again, this is not a spoiler alert, but there was a character who showed his wanger last season and, like, had basically no part. And I was like, oh, this poor guy. He called his mom. He was like, Mom, I'm on Game of Thrones. And then he shows up in this episode, and I was like, oh, dude, you didn't just show your wiener. Yeah. You actually got to talk. And then, I was so happy for him. Yeah. And then other things happened. And I was See, like, that's, that's what, Brad, That's what too. Sasha gets excited for, the, the non-wiener wiener guy. He's well, good great. for him, man. But there was... I mean, I will say that at the end of the episode, Episode, I had this one I still have pressing questions mm -hmm. I am okay with those questions but I feel like the thing that Walking Dead does is they give you like the pump fake mm -hmm. and then when they deliver you're like you made me wait for that yeah. mm -hmm. and Game of Thrones kind of gives you like the pump fake and then they're like oh but here's the delivery here's and you are like ha! Ah! <laughs> it's so good. So basically, what you're saying is that Game of Thrones or Walking Dead pump fakes and then the cable goes out. <laughs> Sopranos. So, yes, yes. <laughs> Game of Thrones pump fakes and he makes the three pointer at the buzzer. Ah, uh, like from half court, yeah. like his name was MJ. Yeah. Hey. Do you want to talk about Twin Peaks casting? I know you were, you were a Twin Peaks guy, right? No. No, you weren't. No. Oh, I thought you were. Oh, X-Files. Okay. Remember X-Files? Oh, X-Files. That's right. I wanted my own X-Files after, so Dennis bad, wouldn't give well, it to me. Well, this Twin Peaks thing is crazy. <laughs> they put out a list of 217 names of the actors that are going to be on the season, and it's everybody from, like, Naomi Watts down to what? Eddie Vedder. Eddie Vedder. going to be in the show. Yeah. No, it's going to be David Plus, Lynch put himself into the show. It's yeah. going to be so cool. I can't wait to see what they do with They're, this. And a lot of the old cast is coming back. A lot of the old cast is not coming back. The names that they left off that list were very, very interesting. Twin Peaks was very popular in my house, and then it was very unpopular because my brother and I didn't sleep for like most of the time oh. that series was on TV because we snuck watched it because we liked it so much, and then we'd like snuggle like under our parents' bed because we didn't. I was like thirteen. Because you were Christ. scared. Yeah, I get really scared oh. of a lot of things, guys. Speaking of being scared, dude, Penny Dreadful. You guys, if you are not watching Penny Dreadful, you are sleeping on a fantastic show. It came back last night, David. I know you watched this thing. They <laughs> brought it back with a raging throner <laughs> vengeance. They did. They brought in some new characters that I'm excited to learn more about. Me too. Oh my god. And the way that they Let introduced me, the I mean, characters. It's almost, it's almost like the monster expanded universe. Like basically all the gothic things you can think of. All these characters that you love that, that Frankenstein and just, just throw everything in. It's you know, Avengers it's, of It is Avengers of, of the like monsters. monsters. Yeah. yeah. Is Penny, sell me on Penny Dreadful in under 30 seconds. Eva because... Green, done. One second. <laughs> Next topic, Sinead. 
No, I'm joking. Yeah. I'm not joking. Yeah. No, it's true. Okay, here's how you need to look at it. You, okay, have, you know me. I don't like scary stuff. Is this scary? I don't like Is scary stuff either. Stuff? Watch it, it with the light on, man. It is supernatural. Watch it at my house because I'm telling you, here's what you have. You have... Is it like Nick? Does everybody get syphilis in it? Nobody well, has gotten syphilis yet. There's some, yeah, there's there's some, there's demon some possessions, yep, there's, yep. possessions, but there's no... Okay. So there's demon possession. Yes. yes. Which is kind of like syphilis. Right. Yeah. <laughs> get it the out. Supernatural, get it it's, out. It's, it's a supernatural syphilis. Oh, okay. <laughs> demon possession. You don't want okay. that. Okay. Here's Man, what you I need to know. I've already like my syphilis maximum shows. Okay. Number one, okay. you've got unbelievable acting. Like Eva Green needs to win an Emmy. You've also got Timothy Dalton, a former Bond person. And you've got Josh Hartnett, people who maybe did not deserve a second chance, but who are proving over... Josh Hartnett? What do you call Hartnett. him? Josh Hartnett. Whatever. <laughs> blah, blah. Josh Hartnett. is breaking it down. <laughs> nobody remembers that because nobody remembered that guy. And then he came into He's Penny Dreadful and suddenly you're like, wait, this is incredible. It is a fantastic period piece. It is a monster show, but it is scary in all the right ways. And none of those like jump out and scare you thrills. It actually has like insane character development. And when you do get the thrill, it's because you're invested in the characters. I love top hats. Yeah, yeah, it's a turn of the century. I know, it's but I like top hats. That's what I'm There's saying. Big top hats. Frankenstein. For, so good. Yeah, yeah. So good. See, I don't, well, all right, so let's all talk about Josh Logan. I, I didn't even know oh who this guy God. was, and I looked at his. I'm like, wait, he wrote Gladiator. He wrote Skyfall. Yeah. Like, who is this guy? Like, he's he's big time, and he writes, as far as I can tell, almost every single episode. Yeah, it's good. All it's right. fantastic. Well, yeah. You guys are maybe he's a good so writer. Yeah, that was a good writer. Writer. That was a and good it's so so addictive. Mm -hmm. And it is one of the first shows that I binged, oh. and I binged it hard. And mm -hmm. dude, la what that, network is it? It's sure. showtime. And small mm, commitment, like like, like Vikings or something, yeah. 10 episodes a season, give or take oh, eight, okay. eight or 10. Well, but this, yeah. that's the this premiere oh. was, was crazy good. Mm. Crazy and good. And it's only on season three, so I only have two yeah. episodes mm -hmm. to go. And right. you'll do it in like two days. <laughs> okay, let's go into the low lights here real quick. Uh, Arrow's Grave episode, I'm probably the only one that can really talk about that one. Uh, SNL is going to 30% less commercials, and Martha going to Russian and the Americans. Uh, maybe this is all low lights for me. Um, the Arrow Grave episode, this is, we've been waiting for this the whole season, and it was just a boring episode. Uh, the fact that we got the person in the grave that we kind of thought was going to be in the grave, and now they're going to possibly bring this person back on other shows. And just Arrow is really just legit dropping the ball on this one. The quiver is falling off the Arrow's back. The best episode of Arrow this year happened on Legends of Tomorrow. I thought this <laughs> episode was a little bit better. Again, not going to spoil. I mean, they... I mean, obviously, things have been revealed about what, what we've been building up to in Arrow, so we won't yeah. spoil in case you haven't gotten there yet. No, spo uh, no spoilers here. But uh, I felt like this last episode was better, the way they handled it. Uh, okay. I was a little bit more into it than the last two. Yeah. But, yeah, I feel like they have been dropping the ball. I feel. I mean, even the showrunners come out and yeah. said that the flashbacks, are he's going to work on them. They're going to be yeah. better because they've been, I feel like they've been pointless. Like there's, there's nothing yeah. to them. Uh, SNL having 30% less commercials. We said it last week. We're kind of making fun of the show. Is that their, their highest rated episode is Prince. A Prince tribute show, mm -hmm. which is no new content, and now they're going to thirty percent less commercials, as if that's going to be like, oh, by the way, we're, you're, you're not going to see as many commercials, but most of the sketches will be product placement. So it'll be like, you know, we're going to come up with, oh, I should have drank Pepsi, and that would have been funnier. <laughs> like that's basically what we're getting, guys. When you say thirty percent less commercials, it just means product placement is going to be way more into the episode. Um, to each their own, whatever. SNL just isn't the quintessential. Just, you know, conversation driving thing that it once was. That's why I still kind of have some faith in the Mad TV reboot. But here's my other thing. Wasn't the whole point of SNL having those commercial breaks and having sketches that are a very specific length because they need the time to turn over the stage for the next sketch? Correct. So I don't even understand how they're going to do this. Like they're logistically. They're going to have one person just pitching a product while the other people get changed. So now the fake commercials might be real commercials. Correct. They're just going to be funnier. Which, yeah, which then companies come in and say this, this certain verbiage has to be in it, which totally curtails any sort of comedy. Believe me, I I know a decent amount about it. Real quick, Martha going to Russian and Americans, they showed a killer. Let's go to Twitter <laughs> questions. <laughs> All right. Danny Hernandez tweets, any TV themes you wouldn't mind blasting in the car while cruising the streets? Orange is the new black and Buffy for myself. Orange is the new black is a really good call. Oh, man. You guys need to watch a show called Just the Ten of Us. It was <laughs> it was a spinoff of Growing Pains and has the greatest opener. <laughs> oh. Life is a game. And I'm sorry. I mean, like, I, Sing it, boy. if you go on YouTube and just look up 80s and 90s TV theme songs, they have medleys of them, which I will play. <laughs> I used to play them during parties. And you'd be like, is this Growing Pains? Like, Goddamn right. It is. Dude. Yeah. There, no, there's so many great ones from the 80s and 90s. I was thinking about that. But like, cheers. How can you not go back to cheers? Yeah. Come on. What do you got, Dave? I have uh, I like I love my Simpsons, of course. Oh, That's yeah. like my favorite comedy of all okay. time. Uh, Sopranos. Woke up Ooh. this morning. Ooh. Got yourself a gun. Yeah. Love that uh, yeah. theme song. 
Um, I don't know what uh, DuckTales, of course, all, oh, the, all, yeah. the, all the Disney Woo! power, all those Disney like Tailspin, they were all fantastic. Sure. Well, I also uh, Macy Williams, who mm. is Arya Stark. By the way, I was listening to the W the EW podcast the other day, and they kept calling Catelyn Stark Caitlyn Stark, and it was driving me crazy. Yeah. Sorry, that's just like a uh, side note. But uh, Arya Catelyn Stark Gatlin. was playing was a. Uh, doing like a redux of the Game of Thrones theme song. And it was death and boobies, death and boobies, death and... And I was like, <laughs> I would totally listen to that redux yeah. in my car, windows down. <laughs> I, I I don't know if I said it last week, but we were out uh, having lunch last Sunday and there was a woman playing outdoor violin. Oh, yeah. Just her, and I had her play the Game of Thrones theme song. And, and she started playing it and everybody was like, she playing Game of Thrones? I was like, and yeah, I requested were, it. They were, they were afraid good. they were going to die. Sinead, you got some theme songs up in that noggin. What do you like? Um, well, we've talked about this a little bit before. Um, obviously, I really like the Friends theme song. Um, but for me, like when I think of theme songs to like play in the car, I don't think it could be anything really modern, like right from TV right now, because theme songs have taken like a step down, I think, since the 90s and early 2000s. A lot now of shows don't even have theme right, now. now it's just mostly like instrumentals or just like, da na na, and then yeah. that's it. <laughs> 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 and that's all you get. Or just like the title and boom. Yeah. That's it, like lost. Mm -hmm. Oh, Hawaii Five O. We've talked smack about the show, but Hawaii Five O, that the inner I would love for them to bring back full length theme songs. Yeah, yeah like that a minute would be and a half, amazing. Like Especially in comedies that like come through the door and they're like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And they like catch a beach ball and they're like <laughs> Yep. Uh what's next? Adam tweets, Will T V shows ever use a YouTube viewer like count to dictate if people are watching? I think we're getting there. Uh, I think we need that to be honest. You with think you. we would see it? They would show it to us? No, 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 yeah. not on like the bottom of your show. Like we wouldn't actually see it, but I think that we're gonna start getting to the point where when you click on an episode via your DVR, it gets sent to like some sort of I don't know how technology works. If I went back in time and I knew how to invent Google, I would do it. But if they right. sent me back in time, I'd still be the same idiot that has no idea how Google works. <laughs> but <laughs> I know TV that there's, there, yeah, but there's gotta be a, an algorithm on your DVR or some kind of thing when you click on a show and it shows how much you retain, how much you watch, where it is, that kind of thing. You don't think they're already doing that? They no. are a little bit. Yeah, like I was thinking about this with um, like Amazon, like the way Amazon does their pilots I is like that, yeah. they release a bunch of pilots and they see how many people watch them and how many people comment on them and what the comments are. And that's how they decide what to move forward with. Yeah. So so I think we're we're kind of already there, and you know the Nielsen ratings are early YouTube viewership numbers. It's mm -hmm. just that now the Nielsen box is so antiquated, yeah. um, and now you have to think about like the plus three ratings, the plus five ratings. So it's like whatever the rating was plus three days for DVR playback, plus five days for DVR playback. But like there's shows that I have on my DVR from like a month ago, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna get there, but that's not getting accounted for. I have saved an episode of The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon because oh. Christopher Cross plays the final song, and he's oh. the greatest U.S. musician. Of all time. I have Beyonce's <laughs> Lemonade saved on my DVR and I'm very happy for it because it's no longer on HBO. Uh, what do you got? What do you think, Sinead? You like that? Would you um, like it to be more of something like that? I, I, I kind of think that they already do that. Yeah. Like, I really do think that if they're not doing that, then I, I think that they're already doing it. And I mm. honestly think that there has to be a way that they're checking DVR numbers as well by now, too. Mm. DVR has been around for a long time. They do. Enough. It's the plus three, plus it's five. Like they the, just don't go beyond five. But it's like, the, it's like the what we were talking about with like the network model, is mm -hmm. the network still lives on this terrible, terrible Nielsen thing. Anyway, CBS is the most watched network, guys. Shit. And HBO has the most pirated show. There so that says a lot. Mm -hmm. And pirates are pretty cool. Black sauce. <laughs> uh, Sinead, what's next? The Lonely Seahorse. Oh, he Aww. tweets, <laughs> what, would, what would you include on your best episodes of TV list? I'd add The Constant from Lost and White Christmas from Black Mirror. Dave? Uh, there's a Sopranos episode called Employee of the Month, Ooh. season three, which is my favorite season of The Sopranos. Uh, Spoiler box if it's uh, available. Um, so uh, thank you, you. Thank you for that, yeah, yeah. Adam. Thank you very much. Nice. Uh, Melfi, Dr. Melfi, Tony Soprano's psychiatrist, is raped. And she has this dilemma before her because she's treating Tony Soprano. She knows exactly who and what he is. And she has this choice. It's this dilemma that's just it's like, do I tell him? You know, because she, she, obeys, she, she mm -hmm. abides by the law. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's going to tell him and then he's going to just destroy this guy because the guy gets off. That's yeah. the thing. He's an employee of the month at some chicken place he works mm -hmm. at. He gets off scot-free wow. and she never tells him. Mm -hmm. And she sits with that. She's been raped, horribly raped, beaten like she looks horrible. And then she never tells Tony. And she knows like, Tony at this one point in one of their sessions, like she starts crying. And Tony reaches over and says, what's wrong? 
and you can just see the turmoil in her. She just doesn't say anything. She could have said something. It's a beautiful episode. It's a great yeah. episode. It's yeah. one of my favorites. It's hard it's to watch, but it's one in of my favorites. In the same favorite. season as Pine Barrens. Which yeah, is which a lot of people consider one of the best Sopranos episodes. Yeah. Actually, for me, I like Employee of the Month. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I would have gone with uh, last night's episode of Game of Thrones because it was so good. Uh, the second to the last episode of Breaking Bad, which has a name that is very complicated. Ozymandias. Thank you. Yep. Ozymandias, yep. which was written by creator of Flesh and Bone, our girl uh, Moira Wally Beckett. That episode, watching Walt's descent into... I mean, just the Hell. darkest of dark. It is so brilliant, so perfect. Set up a finality in a uh, finality. Set up a finale in a way that I think is very difficult to top. Mm -hmm. I just I think that episode was phenomenal. I'm uh, I might go air on the comedy side since you guys have hitting two of my favorite episodes. Hitting. Um, I the backwards episode of Seinfeld is so smart because they basically turned a Seinfeld into a memento. <laughs> but like, which is uh, like, wait, you, no, it's, it's, you think about how this is done, like there's some quick, there's some, some small, and then they go back to the beginning of the entire show. It's just so well done. I love the backwards episode of Seinfeld. What about you, Sinead? I literally can't think of one. <laughs> There's a great episode of Friends, like in your brain right oh, now, and well, you want to bring The Leather Pants episode of Friends. Come leather on. Leather Pants episode. Dennis and I were just talking about that episode. Leather Pants. Uh, episode. Ross goes on a date and he gets stuck in his leather oh, pants. Oh yes, 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 yes. Okay. Um, yeah, there's there's tons. My favorite episode of Friends ever would be the one where they first fight for the apartment. And it's oh, the guys yeah. versus the girls. Oh. What does Chandler, Chandler Bong? Do? Yes, Chandler <laughs> Bong. That's exactly right. Um, Let's do one more. Everyone's going to think that I literally all I do is watch <laughs> Friends, <laughs> which is fun. You watch Pretty Little Liars too. Yeah. But it's just like no matter if I don't have an answer for something, you guys will just ask me about Friends, <laughs> and I'm more than happy to answer honestly. <laughs> all right, let's do one more. <laughs> okay. Michael Harian tweets, is there a TV show you never finished watching because of bad reviews of the rest of the seasons? For me, it was Prison Break. Uh, yeah, uh, House of Lies. I started like, watching mm. like, the first two seasons and I was just kind of over it. And I love Don Cheadle. Uh, it, it just, that, that show just, ugh, it was just, it just became the same thing. Each season was the same thing. Start hot, bad middle, end is good. I've never given up a show because of reviews. I've given up shows because of like my own opinion. And I have to say, I, I was so disappointed last season in Orange is the New Black, mm. which was a show that I was really enjoying. Yeah, I'm over it. And like, I probably got, I want to say, six episodes into the last season. And I didn't give it up because I was like, screw this show. I literally forgot to keep watching. Yeah. And I think that's a terrible, terrible sign, especially for a show that I loved. What about you, mm. Dave? It, it just depends. I mean, it's not always. It, it could be time, sometimes time. Like I know there's shows like The Good Wife. I try to start watching a couple episodes. I hear that's fantastic. It always yeah. gets great. I know CBS, but it always gets it always wins awards and people just rave about it. Critics that you and I uh, we all yeah. respect. And uh, I just it's too long. It's too much. Fifty to twenty two episodes per season. Five right, seasons right. in. I just don't have the time for it. There's other shows that I fall out of love with. Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah. I watched a premiere. I just said that's enough. I just don't. It's not. It's not the worst show in the world. I don't hate it. It's just I don't have time to keep watching it, and it's not something I want to invest my time in because yeah. TV watching should be an enjoyable experience, no yeah. matter what you're watching. No whether you're slug. watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills or you're watching, you know, Game of Thrones. And Agreed. if it's not enjoyable, then you should just just don't be afraid to let a show go. Some people are afraid to let shows go. Even if yeah. you've invested ten years in something, you're like, maybe I don't need to watch it anymore. Let it go. Yeah, it's all right. David Griffin, everybody. Smart man. He is. Frozen. Sometimes I say something that makes sense every Let now and then. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Dave, your pick of the week here. Oh, on that's the right. Show. Thank you. First right. of all, thank you guys for your Twitter questions. Hashtag at Clatter TV Talk. We take questions all week long. We look at your tweets. If they're really good, we put them on. If they're not, I usually just favor it and give you the answer on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for the Twitter question. Thanks for the Twitter interaction. Yeah. I feel like after we do every show, there's always these questions about guys, do you watch this? Do you watch this? You're going to talk about this. So, one of those questions that I kept getting over and over again, thank you for whoever's doing that, is uh, the Hunt. Uh, and that's CW's The 100. For me, it is the CW's most underrated show. I think it might be their best. I want to say for sure it's their darkest. Mm. It's a show that it goes everywhere. It's post-apocalyptic. It's science fiction. It's There's there's issues. Uh, so basically, I'll, let, let me get right into the, the premise of it. There was a uh, nuclear holocaust. Mm. All the people from Earth are up in space, from these space stations, and they have to hide out there until the Earth is habitable again to go back down. These group of kids, the hundred, get sent down because, you know, they're the dregs of society. They've all kind of committed some kind of crime or something like that. They send them down kind of as a test to see if the Earth is still habitable. Spoiler alert, it's first episode, spoiler, uh, <laughs> it is. 
It is, all right? So, I mean, that, that's, just, that's just how the story gets going. Then from there, it just takes off. They're not afraid to kill off main characters like Game of Thrones, like The Walking Dead. You're never sure what's going to happen. No one is safe which I love. There's, uh, there's issues of sexuality. There's, you know, some, some of the, the women are fantastic. They're great. There's great female leads in this. I mean, everything I, I love about it, there's tribal issues, there's mor issues of morality and ambiguity. I mean, it's so good. It's just really well done. There's a lot of different levels here that you might not see coming from a CW, unlike a lot of the CW shows like Flash and Arrow, that soap opera nature is non-existent. Mm -hmm. It's not there. Interesting. So if you're looking for a different style of CW show from Flash and Arrow, give the hundred a shot. All right. Question. Can you throw the picture back up? Is that, if you can, <laughs> it's okay. Is that Desmond? <clears throat> Where? Oh, yeah. The, is that Desmond the right. on the far right? Desmond from Lost. Not from Penny's boat from Lost. Who is that guy? Oh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm Who, who yeah, is that? Because I was yeah. going to say, sold okay. American if that dude's on it. Yeah. All right, cool. It sounds, yeah. I, d yeah. that was Great a very good sell. And if, but if you watch the first couple episodes, you're like, ooh. Give it to episode four. Okay. Give it to episode three or four. The first couple are a little, you're like, oh, okay, but just give it, I, I call it Battlestar Baby. It's like Battlestar Galactica, mm. but with younger people and all very pretty, obviously, because it's a CW, yeah. but it, it's very good. Cool. Man, mm -hmm. I hope if I'm in a space station and the Earth isn't uninhabitable, I get sent down with the model people because it sounds <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's it for this episode of Collider TV Talk, guys. Again, uh, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. We thank you guys for all the interaction. Uh, let's go around the table and tell everybody where they can find you. Miss DeFreeze. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Sinead DeFreeze and at that's so Sinead.com. David Griffin. I am at Griffin DE, and you're going to be able to find me on two recap shows this week. I'm doing the Flash recap show, which I do every week here on Collider Video, but I'm also joining Mr. Makuga <gasps> for the Arrow recap show. Nice. Bringing the heat. Whoa, yes. that's a South legend Beach. of today. Yeah, yeah. What's <laughs> yeah. up? Yeah. Miss <laughs> Pearl Raver. Uh, you can find me at Sasha Pearl Raver on Twitter and Instagram, Thursday nights uh, co hosting Schmoes No, and Friday nights hosting FX Movie Download on FX. And uh, I'm Josh McCuga. You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh McCuga, my YouTube channel, The Josh McCuga Show. I'm here every Monday talking TV with you beautiful people on hashtag it Collider TV Talk. Thank you guys for watching. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.